into some more ocean animal chemistry. You may not realise it, but toxic runoff from factories, fertilisers drained from farms and chemicals spilled into our waterways can all end up in the same place, our oceans. So what effects are these toxic substances having on our marine wildlife? Well, that's where I come in. Hi, I'm Jason. I'm an ecotoxicologist, and here at Griffith University, we're able to test the effects of these potentially harmful chemicals on our marine wildlife without bringing them into the lab. And all we need is a sample of the animal cells. Our testing can work with any marine animal. We often use small skin samples that are collected and sent to us by marine animal experts. We only need a tiny sample of the animal's skin so they aren't harmed. Today in our lab, we're testing skin cells from a sea turtle. We've cut the skin sample into tiny little pieces and put it into this nutrient solution to help the cells grow. The cells go into an incubator where it's kept at a constant 30 degrees. By doing this, we're mimicking the turtle's body temperature. After a few weeks, our flask is filled with millions of turtle skin cells. So now it's time to do the toxicity testing. Today, I'm testing a chemical called Simazine. Simazine is a common herbicide used to weed lawns, but with rain or hosing, it can easily be washed into our waterways where it ends up in the ocean. So we want to know if this could be harming animals like sea turtles, and its effects on sea turtle skin cells can give us some clues. To test the multiplied skin cells, we've put them into this testing plate. Then, we add the chemical we want to test in different strengths. We add a lower concentration to some cells and a higher concentration to others. So we're looking to discover how much of this chemical is toxic enough to kill the cells and also has the function of the cells been damaged. We get our first answer by adding a purple chemical compound. We use this as an indicator. If the cells are still alive, they will metabolise this compound and it turns pink. But if the level of simazine is strong enough to kill the cells, nothing will change and the compound stays purple. And because we added the chemical at a range of different strengths, we can tell the dosage of simazine which is strong enough to start killing off the cells. This can help us determine safe levels of using these chemicals in the real world. We can also do more detailed testing to see if simazine has damaged the functioning of the cells, like the hormones that control an animal's reproduction and growth. We're learning more and more every day how these toxic chemicals are having an effect at a cellular level and how these same chemicals may be having effects on animals in the wild. And with more research, we're hoping to help protect and conserve our amazing marine wildlife for years to come.